Welcome to the first installment of my 2023 annual favorite series. This is all body care, hair care, nail care, fragrance, the general stuff that doesn't fit into the makeup or the skincare category. And let me know if you want me to do a separate video all about my favorite jewelry pieces or my favorite candles. Those are some that I never do, but I've gotten a couple requests for. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And if you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a corporate girly. I have a nine to five job in entertainment marketing. So I like products that are fast and easy to use. And I really like to maintain a smaller beauty collection for a YouTuber that is. So so almost all of my favorites here are just repeats from last year. They're my tried and true favorites for a reason. I'm gonna start with a recent launch that has just found its way into the depths of my heart. And it's a really interesting one. I wasn't expecting to love as much as I do. It's the Bodyography Hand and Body Wash in Vanilla Bourbon. I talked about this recently in my November favorites, I believe. I'll leave that linked on the screen above. <laughs> this totally blew me out of the water. I wasn't expecting Bodyography to launch a spa collection. I saw that the brand Vive also launched a spa collection. So really interesting that brands are kind of branching out a little bit. I love to see it. This is one of the best scents I have ever smelled. And for me, a body wash is just about the fragrance. You know, like a body wash to me is a body wash. Does it get me clean? Does it not strip my skin? Then we're good. This has a vanilla sea salt and bourbon smell. Oh, it's so good. Every time I wash my body, this scent just transports me to another place. You know, all those ridiculous perfume ads, like especially the Dior ones with Natalie Portman or the Dior ones with Charlize Theron. They're just so over the top and there's all this like imagery of them like running through a field or like being dripped in molten gold or like splashing around on the beach. This takes me there. Yeah, it's like, mm, it's this vanilla, but that salty component is so delicious. And with the bourbon, it just makes it so cozy, so rounded out and it's just, it's absolutely lovely. I cannot get enough of this freaking body wash. And they also launched a candle in the same scent and I've already emptied it. I burned it every single night and I ran through it in like three weeks because I was so in love with it. So don't sleep on the Bodyography Spa collection. I am hooked. The next body wash I don't have in front of me, but it's the Salt Air Lush Greens body wash. And I just love Salt Air because they're creating products that have incredible price points and also value and travel sizes, which is what I've wanted from skincare companies for such a long time. They also remind me of the brand Prequel, which is doing something similar for, you know, facial skincare. And the Lush Greens Body Wash is just another fragrance that I, I love. It just transports me to another place. So if the Bodyography Vanilla Sea Salt and Bourbon scent is something that's more appropriate for like this cozy, cold winter time, Salt Air Lush Greens is my spring and summer body wash. It has notes of dewy leaves, cactus flower, and juicy pear. And the website says it smells like walking through a lush tropical forest. I totally agree with that. It's fresh, it's zesty, it's fruity. It's just everything that I want to smell in the spring and summer months. So if I had to pick two favorite body washes, those would be the ones. My favorite deodorant that has been in many annual favorites videos is the Kaya, the Take Sumi Detox Charcoal Deodorant, specifically in the scent English Lime Mint. This is one of my favorite scents of all time. And I wish they did what Salt Air did. You know, Salt Air has like several different products for each scent. And I want this in a fragrance, a shampoo, a conditioner, a body wash. It is just the scent I come back to time and time again. Mm. I just love the smell of mint in body care. It's so fresh. It's like a sweet mint, but that hint of lime is a little bit zingy and adds another layer of freshness that I just adore. As a deodorant itself, do I still get a little bit stinky on those really stressful days? Yes, but this is my perfect deodorant on standard days when I know I'm not gonna be going through something super stressful. In fact, I forgot deodorant, so I'm just gonna put it on right now. It is a charcoal deodorant, so if you have like a black shirt on, it will leave a little bit of like a gray or white kind of stain, so I don't use it on days when I have have black shirts, mm. but instantly I feel like fresh and clean and revitalized. It's just the most incredible smell. And I want other people to try this because it really is so good. I also really like the Necessary Deodorant Gel. That's like an AHA formula that kind of minimizes odor through killing bacteria. I find that to be somewhat effective. Similar thing to the Fit Glow deodorant that I've currently been testing. And I really like the Fit Glow one as well, but Kaya takes the cake. If I could only wear one nail polish for the rest of my life, it would be Olive and June CCT. It is the perfect sheer baby pink. It's not too sheer that your real nail color shows through. It's not too creamy and opaque that it looks like a really bright kind of light pink. For me, it's that perfect my nails but better color. It's the color I reach for when I wanna feel really polished and sophisticated. And it really goes well with my complexion. It's not too white, but it's not too pink. And I do find that the long lasting nail polishes from Olive and June are fantastic. I don't like the quick dry ones as much. I find that those chip very, very quickly, but the long lasting polishes I think are great. And my second favorite nail polish is Olive and June Obsessed. This is my fall and winter shade. It's very similar to, what's that Essie shade, Wicked? 
It's a deep, deep, deep burgundy. I have like 50 other nail polishes that I could talk about that I love, but I figured we would keep it a little bit short today. These are my two favorites. Moving on to body care, I really love the In Beauty Body Bright and Smooth 7% AHA and BHA Body Serum. So real quick first, you know, I really do enjoy scrubs that are in the shower, like the Naturium one that was like a mask and a scrub, it comes in a big tube. I liked that, I emptied it pretty quickly, but I find that if I really wanna see results for my skin, I have to use a leave-on serum. And what I like about about this is it's strong enough that it gets the job done, but it's gentle enough that it doesn't irritate my sensitive skin. And I have a really hard time finding a balance between those two things in most body exfoliants. For the past seven months, I've actually been treating a skin condition that I haven't talked about yet. And I may or may not put pictures in because it's a little gross to look at, but essentially all over my legs and my forearms are just covered in like red inflamed follicles. And my dermatologist can't tell if it's KP or folliculitis, but we basically been treating both. And the treatment for that, I tried topical clindamycin, I tried an antifungal shampoo, and now we're at the point where we're just trying a combination of BHA, AHA, and benzoyl peroxide. And so this is something that I use in my routine very regularly. It makes my skin feel super soft, which I love. And it has the texture of a very lightweight cream. So I like that it applies like a cream, but then it sets down and it doesn't feel like you have anything on. And that's really important to me too. As for body lotion, I have a ton of favorites. I love the Naturium Biolipid body lotion. I love a ton of them from La Roche-Posay. The Fit Glow body creams are fantastic, but time and time again, I always come back to the Josie Moran Whipped Argan Oil Body Butter in Vanilla Bean as one of my favorite textures. It's a little bit more lightweight, which means it's more spreadable than a traditional body butter. Most body butters for me are just a little bit too thick and then it's hard to spread and then I'm just, you know, going into my nighttime routine. It's the last thing I wanna do is apply body lotion. But if I know that I have a formula that's quite thin and spreadable and I can just kind of like apply it like that really quickly, then I'm gonna reach for it. And that helps me actually do my body care more frequently. So love that one. My second favorite is the Josie Moran Pro Retinol Body Butter. I think that one's also vanilla bean. It doesn't have retinol in it, which is a very misleading name, but I actually like the formula of that even more, but it is quite expensive. So I just, I don't purchase it very frequently. I have a bunch that I'm working through right now. So I just don't have the Josie Moran ones with me, but the Pro Retinol one is an even more lightweight and kind of like dewier gel cream kind of finish. And I just love the way it feels on the skin and it's so spreadable. So for me, Josie Moran in terms of body butters is just like king. Let's move on to hair stuff. So I've had a bit of a hair transformation over the past year. I'll put in a picture here. If you're new to my channel, I used to be bleach blonde and that was my identity for the majority of my life. And it, it was just hard to maintain and it was so expensive. So now that I've dyed my hair a little bit darker, which is closer to my roots, I'm on a journey of trying to heal my hair and take better care of it. And I found a lot of success in the Living Proof Triple Bond Complex. Now, if you wanna check out a fantastic channel for hair care, I would look at Abby Young's channel. She does so many incredible videos. I think her favorite is still K18, but K18 I found difficult to use and it made my hair feel like straw. I don't have that problem with this product. It's really simple. You just do your regular shampoo conditioner routine and then on damp hair, you put it through your hair and then you sit for 10 minutes and don't apply any other products or dry your hair. And then after 10 minutes, you can add products and you can style as usual. While I personally haven't noticed a difference in my hair because frankly, I just don't really pay attention to my hair, my my hairstylist has noticed a difference and she said that like I have way less breakage, my hair is in significantly better condition and so we have both just assumed that it's from using this because I don't use anything else in my routine that really strengthens my hair. Everything else in my routine actually damages it so this is doing a fantastic job. So once the Living Proof Triple Bond Complex has set in my hair then I like to add texture with a product that's not very good for your hair. It's a sea salt spray. It's the Not Your Mother's Texturizing Beach Babe Salt Spray. I will never go to another salt spray. This is the best both for formula and price point. It's a drugstore brand. You can get it at Ulta. And I linked it below along with all the other products. I like that it has a very subtle vanilla coconut smell. I just find that so many hair products are so overly fragranced, but this one's nice and light and beachy, which I love. And I like to spray this on damp hair all over my head and then I brush it through. And if I put my hair in a bun and go to sleep with it, I wake up the next morning with just really nice waves. Or if I spray it on my hair and then I dry my hair and style it, I find that my hair just has such better hold. I've probably gone through like 50 bottles of this in the past few years. It's my favorite sea salt spray. And I also like that they come in a little mini size. By the way, if you are seeing any weird looking uh tattoos. It's because I ordered some ink box tattoos, which is, if you don't know, they're a temporary tattoo company. And I'm planning some bigger tattoos to go along with my little one here. And I was just kind of getting a sense for like the placement and the size and the style and the shape of things. So if you're like, did you get a bunch of weird smudgy little blue tattoos? That's what's up. I discovered a dry shampoo this year that is so fantastic and 
so affordable. My friend Stephanie of Beauty Unhyped on Instagram, who also has a really great beauty blog, recommended the I Do Care Tap Secret Mattifying Dry Shampoo Powder. If you have not tried a dry shampoo powder, I highly recommend it. I find that a dry shampoo powder over an aerosol makes my hair so much cleaner. They don't add grit or texture or hold to the hair, but I find that it's just so much more effective at making the hair look more clean. And what's great about this product is if you open it up, all of the dry shampoo is in this little powder puff here, and then you just apply it onto your head. I'm not gonna do that because unfortunately, it does kind of get everywhere. So I think you can see it just kind of gets all around the outside of the packaging. So it's not a perfect component, but it is a perfect formula and a perfect price point. And it's also completely fragrance-free. And I have heard a couple people say, you can just take any kind of translucent powder. You could take a translucent face powder, you could take baby powder, and you can just use a sponge or a brush and apply it like that. But for me, I think this is perfect and I I think it's only a few bucks. My favorite aerosol dry shampoo, time and time again, Moroccan oil dry shampoo dark tones. There really isn't a difference between the light tones and the dark tones, so don't let that throw you off. But I, this is just my favorite. The smell is incredible. I, you know, I really don't like most hair care companies because they're so overly fragranced, but I love the Moroccan oil scent. It's like a very comforting, like, amber smell. It's just, it's really nice and it's not too strong. It adds a little bit of texture to my hair. It cleans pretty well. Um, I don't get a white cast unless I overspray in my hair, but a tip that Abby Young taught me is if you actually dry your hair with a hair dryer, like on a hot setting, it can get the white cast to go away. So try that out if you have issues with dry shampoo looking really white or gray in your hair. So this is a great dry shampoo if you want something that has a little bit of texture to it, but mostly has a soft feel. It's just great. I love it. I've been using it for years and it's always my favorite. So every year, my favorite texturizing spray is the Oribe Dry Texturizing Spray. And you know, in previous years, I've said, if you want a really good affordable version, the Verb Texture Spray is good. The Moroccan Oil Texture Spray is also good. But this year, I've really just focused on my number one favorites in every category. And it's just always the Oribe Dry Texturizing Spray. Nothing beats it. Like if my hair is pretty soft and silky right now, this will give it a really good amount of texture. And it also has a pretty good amount of hold as well. So you can see now, it definitely gave my hair a little bit more volume, a little bit more of that texture that I really crave. I just don't spray this before I curl because I find that my curls will not hold if this is sprayed in my hair before. But if it's in my hair after I curl it, then I think it works just great. My favorite curling iron is the Beach Waver B1. Now I don't think they make this specific color anymore, but they have a ton of colors of the B1 Waver. And I believe one just stands for one inch. In my previous videos, I've been using, I think a, the one and a half barrel and it's definitely in a bigger curl and I find that my hair just does not respond well to slightly bigger curling irons. This size is what holds my hair. I don't know why but if I go up to one and a half inch barrel my hair just like falls right out but this my hair will stay curled all day and for me that is a miracle. Hold on I'm gonna plug this in so you can see what I'm talking about. I love the Beach Waver irons because they are so easy to use especially if you're someone like me who has hypermobile EDS and like things holding things up in your hair gets really tiring. So the curling iron is not on right now so there's no heat but I just want to show you what it looks like. I curl my hair by clamping it at the bottom leaving a little bit out and then you just press this button now it's on and you just rotate it using these buttons so you don't even have to do any work you're just gonna hang down and then you're good to go so it's just an incredibly easy iron to use it makes it so fast I can curl my entire head in less than 10 minutes it's it's phenomenal, love it. A recent favorite of mine is this Day Vegan Detangle and Style Brush. What I like about it is it has those little plasticky ends, but it also has those like super short, fine bristles. So it does what it says. It kind of like styles and detangles at once. It's $24, so you can definitely find cheaper hairbrushes out there. But for me, this has been working great. And I just think it makes my hair look soft and shiny. It's great for every purpose. And honestly, I mean, if you just pay $24 once, you're probably not gonna need another brush for a very long time. So I certainly don't mind that it has a higher price point for a brush than I'm used to. And now onto perfumes, my favorite part of the video. If I had to pick one fragrance as my signature scent, it would undoubtedly be Commodity Gold Personal. So the way Commodity works is they take one fragrance that has kind of the most basic notes, which would be the personal line that comes in the white packaging. Then they have Expressive, which has a few other notes, and then Bold, which is the most complex out of that one fragrance line. Commodity Gold Personal is a vanilla-based fragrance. It's just vanilla vanilla, sandalwood, amber, and ISOE Super. And ISOE Super is a molecule that some people can smell. I happen to not be able to smell it. It smells like water to me, 
but apparently it has a little bit of like a woody cedar kind of smell. Mm, this is just so good. It's a little bit of a sweet vanilla, but it's more like a creamy vanilla to me. And the sandalwood and amber just make it really warm and grounded and comforted. So it's not just vanilla. I get compliments when I wear this all the time and nobody ever thinks like, wow, you smell like a baked goods or vanilla. People just say, wow, you smell really good. What I also like about it is I'm very, very sensitive to smells. And I find that this is a lighter fragrance. So it does fade a little bit. And that's why I keep the travel size with me in my purse at all times. It never gives me a headache and it just makes me feel really clean and really like myself. It's it's a really cozy scent without being overwhelming. So this is my signature scent, more so in the fall and winter months, but I wear this year round. But Ellis Brooklyn Sunfruit is one when the weather is warm that I just always crave reaching for. So these are both kind of like my signature daytime scents. I cannot tell you how obsessed I am with Sunfruit. It's just, the packaging is so fun. I definitely need a full size bottle at this point. And it's a fruity floral scent. And normally I hate any kind of floral notes and fragrance, but this is done so beautifully. The description says, inspired by tan lines, ripe fruit and bare skin, this fragrance is a creamy and unapologetic Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> this fragrance is a creamy and unapologetic blend of fresh fig, bergamot, hand-picked jasmine, cyclamen, coconut, and vanilla. Addictive and aspirational, it's the kind of scent that inspires vacation daydreams. Yeah, you really just get that juicy fig, but I can also very much smell the kind of freshness of the bergamot. The floral notes from the jasmine come through, but I actually hate jasmine in perfume and it's not super strong. You can just tell that you're somewhere super summery and there's like a little bit of fruit and a little bit of floral qualities. It's not the kind of floral note that like hits you in the face. And then it's just rounded out by the coconut and vanilla. So it's just my perfect like warm weather fragrance. It's juicy, it's fruity, it's floral, it's creamy, it's coconutty, it's kind of sweet. It's just, it's beautiful. I love it. And if you wanna watch my perfume collection video where I reviewed every perfume in my collection. I'll leave that linked on the screen above. It's still one of my favorite videos I've ever filmed. It's just missing a couple of newer favorites, but it's still pretty much the same thing. Now, my nighttime signature scent is Diptyque's Eau Dwell, and I do prefer the Eau de Toilette over the Eau de Parfum. I find the Eau de Parfum is a little bit more intense and a little bit more spicy, maybe. I just much prefer the EDT. It's also a vanilla scent, but it's much more nighttime appropriate for me because it's quite spicy. The website says, an ode to travel and vanilla. Along the spice route, the vanilla at the heart of Odwell takes on new aromas. Luminous, addictive accents of calamus and dark smoky nuances of cypriol. Traveling through time and over borders, bourbon vanilla from Madagascar reveals itself between darkness and light. The vanilla bean is the fruit of the orchid flower. Harvested while still green, it must undergo a maturation process of 34 months. It's dried slowly so that all of the subtle sweet perfume can develop. The Diptyque website doesn't really talk about the notes, but Fragrantica does. And they say it has notes of bourbon vanilla, elemi resin, cardamom, juniper, pink pepper, olibanum, black tea, bergamot, ambergris musk, and saffron. So this has a lot going on, but vanilla is still the most prominent note that I smell here, and that's why I like it. And what's so nice is that there are cool and warm spices in here. So pink pepper for me is more of a warm spice. It's definitely got that more like traditional spicy quality to it. But then the cardamom is a cool spice. And I think that contrast is really beautiful. The bergamot and black tea is just a beautiful addition here because you get that kind of fresh, spicy creaminess too. If you like vanilla, you just gotta try it. And especially if you like vanilla, keep your eyes open on my channel because I'm staring at about 50 fragrance samples that I'm gonna review for a video and I only have two more to test. So I'm getting close to filming that video. And if you wanna know all about 50 different vanilla perfumes, I gotcha. My last vanilla favorite is Jo Malone Vetiver and Golden Vanilla. Now Jo Malone's fragrances for me typically fade really quickly and I kind of get annoyed by that, but this is their Cologne Intense and I find that it is quite strong. So I have to be pretty careful when I spray this, otherwise it can be a little too strong and I have to wipe it off. But this smells so good. The website says, the coast of Madagascar rich with orchid filled jungle and green fields of tall grass. From its roots, vetiver emerges. It, it's earth Earthy depths warmed by vanilla bourbon with an aromatic touch of lavender. Beautiful and detectable. Nope, beautiful and <laughs> delectable. <laughs> Detectable. So this has some similar notes to Eau Dwell, but they smell completely different. This is notes of vanilla, vetiver, cardamom, tea, and grapefruit. So again, the vanilla is prominent, but there are so many other notes that I can smell here. And for me, the vetiver makes it like really woody, which is super nice. And then that cardamom tea and grapefruit is just such a nice combination. It really does smell like you're drinking like a spicy cardamom tea. There's just something really special about it. I don't hear anyone ever talk about vetiver and golden vanilla from Jo Malone. And if you like vanilla, but especially if you don't want a vanilla that is like 
sugary sweet or something that smells like like pink sugar you know what i mean like if you're if you're not looking for that kind of smell this is something that i think can be unisex yep okay i've been looking through fragrantica and everybody agrees that this is very unisex if not almost even slightly masculine i don't think it's masculine but i definitely think it's unisex it's just a really sexy scent in the fall and winter months specifically i really enjoy wearing diptyque orpheon at night and this is a really interesting one it's also phoebe bridger's signature scent but i liked this before i found that out the website it says at the heart of this composition are the warmth of tonka bean and the depth of cedar the richness of jasmine and the vivacity of juniper berries orpheon eau de parfum is a tribute an olfactory portrait of a legendary bar where the founders of diptyque love to get together amid curls of tobacco smoke powdery trails of blusher and burnished wood so this really does encompass and beautifully describe the scent memory of the bar Orpheon that stood next to the original Diptyque store. It is powdery, but it's the only perfume I've ever smelled that's powdery that I like. All other powdery fragrances give me a headache and this one doesn't, but it's powdery in the sense of a woman's blush. And I just think that that's such a beautiful note to put in a perfume. It's not powdery like baby powder, which makes me want to vom. It's that old school makeup smell, which is oddly comforting to me. And then they combine that with these woody notes to mimic the wood from the bar. It's very smoky. So you imagine all the people like smoking in a bar. So it's got juniper berry, which gin is made from. And there's like a hint of tonka bean in there. But to me, I really smell smoke, cedar, and powder blusher, among anything else. I just think it's really unique, and I, I honestly haven't smelled anything like this before. And my last favorite is a spring and summer perfume that I have been talking about a lot. I just love Skylar Coconut Cove. Runner-ups, I also really like Lime Sands and Salt Air. I was gonna include those in this video, but I really wanted to narrow it down to just like, my absolute favorites, and I wear this all the time. The description says, this is a fragrance that will transport your spirit to an exotic locale. The notes of creamy coconut mingles with blooms of jasmine and gardenia for an intoxicating yet tranquil blend. Coconut Cove is a calming yet sensual perfume to inspire you to chart your own path. This to me is coconut done right. It is a salty, skin-like coconut which I just love. So the top notes are bergamot, cardamom, hibiscus, nectar, and twist of lemon. Middle notes are coconut, jasmine petal, gardenia, and lush greens. Base notes are ambrox, coastal woods, heliotrope, and vanilla orchid. Mm. It's a little fresh. It's a little floral. It's coconutty. It's musky. It's a little woody. It's got some greens in there. Yeah, they were spot on. It really just smells exactly like a tropical vacation. It's fantastic. And so, you know, in the warmer months, I alternate between sun fruit and coconut cove as my signature scents. That's it for this video. Let me know if you want to see a jewelry collection or a candle favorites video, because I have so many that I can show in those categories. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I've been having an issue where apparently I haven't been showing up on some people's subscription feeds. So my videos have been performing very terribly and it just, it's a real, real kick in the dick. Stay tuned for my annual skincare and makeup favorites next. And if you made it this far, thanks so much. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.